I got you. Here's my personal favorite. You'll love it. Uh, thanks. There are many mysteries in Hasbin Hotel, with the most significant being why human souls enter heaven. No one knows what a person must do on Earth to have a peaceful afterlife, but the season 1 finale provides potential answers. Serpentius's death opens the door for many changes in heaven and hell, from sinners becoming angels and angels falling to have a new life below. With Charlie at the helm, hell may become a midway point for wayward humans after death, where they have to overcome their worst traits before they can enter heaven. A popular fan theory claims Adam will be the next sinner at Charlie's door, so in today's video we're evaluating how Adam will become a demon in season 2. Wait, your name is Adam? Like the first man, Adam? That means you! Uh... Adam is well known around the world as the fabled first man on Earth. He lived in the Garden of Eden with his first wife Lilith, who later became Charlie's mother and the bride of Lucifer. In Overture, Charlie explains in her narration how Lilith wanted to leave Adam and later helped entice Eve into eating the forbidden apple. Lilith gets sent to hell with Lucifer, but Adam's raised on a pedestal, with his life becoming a legacy known throughout heaven, hell, and earth. He becomes an angel in the afterlife, experiencing eternal peace while his former partners were either banished to hell or never shown in the first season. Despite Adam's admittance into heaven, his personality makes him appear wildly out of place. During his first appearance in Overture, it became apparent how egotistical, misogynistic, and cruel Adam is. He cuts Charlie off at every term, makes jokes about the movement for equality, and insists that sinners in hell don't deserve a second chance. His sense of humor is crude, he has no talent for diplomacy, and he genuinely enjoys partaking in violent acts against hell citizens. His near bloodthirsty nature may be why Sarah allowed him to lead his own section of an angelic army. Most angels wouldn't want to enact pain and suffering onto others, even those who had their souls condemned to hell. Adam is a unique case and his willingness to fight hands-on for heaven's cause would make him the perfect choice for a military leader. Regardless of why the angels elected Adam, the leader of the exorcists, he still becomes an assertive figure with an army under his control. The exorcists are a legion of angels sent to exterminate sinners once a year. We're gonna go down and exterminate demon- Destroy that egg! Their mass murder spree serves to help deal with Hell's overpopulation problem, even though it directly harms human souls. The exorcists don't mind the pain they inflict because they find it enjoyable. They don't operate under any moral code as they kill any sinner, be they man, woman, child, or anyone in between. When an exorcist doesn't meet this expectation, it's considered a betrayal of their organization. We witness this firsthand in Welcome to Heaven when Adam reveals Vaggie was once an angel and part of the exorcists. However, after she hesitates to kill a child sinner, she's left behind in Hell to live without her her wings for eternity. Despite doling out punishment, Adam isn't afraid to hold a grudge. If leaving Vaggie to live in hell half-blind and wingless wasn't bad enough, then his order to kill her during the show must go on is. He goes far enough to offer a reward to any exorcist who kills her, ensuring she'll have lower chances of surviving his attack at the Hasbin Hotel. Adam also relentlessly endangers Charlie and the other residents, condemning the only sinners in hell who are trying to do right and better themselves. With all of this to consider, Adam doesn't seem like the type of human who should end up in heaven. It's possible his his willingness to serve his divine plan and his aptitude as a military general is what kept him within angel status. However, he behaves much like many of the sinners we see throughout the series, which makes the line between them blur considerably. When we come back, there won't be a demon left alive to pull a stunt like this again! It's also possible that once a soul enters heaven, it's notoriously hard to leave. Throughout the series, Adam and other angels claim sinners don't deserve second chances or their souls can't have redemption. That same train of thought could prevent human souls from falling to hell because if they lived well enough to earn their place in heaven, then they should never have to leave. If that's the case, Adam could do anything he wanted and not face harsh punishment. Examples in the series include the murder of human souls, crude language, and general cruelty. He barely receives a glare from Sarah when he reveals the exterminations to the Council of Angels, showing that he can make mistakes mistakes no matter how large. Additionally, Adam makes a list in Welcome to Heaven that what he believes allows a soul to enter heaven. The list included, act selfless, don't steal, and stick it to the man. However, when Angel Dust completes all three of these requirements during a live broadcast and doesn't appear in heaven, it's brought to light that angels don't know what brings a human soul into heaven. Even the Seraphims, Sarah and Emily, are clueless about the requirements. Unfortunately, their lack of knowledge means we have no idea why Adam appeared in heaven, aside from being the first human man to walk the earth. The series sheds light on the significant history in the show must go on. During the extermination between the exorcists and the Hasbin Hotel residents, Serpentius gives his life trying to save his friends. Using his death ray, he attempts to face Adam head-on before ultimately losing, giving his life for the cause. Fire. <laughs> At 
the moment, it seems like he's gone forever, but he later appears in heaven before Sarah and Emily sporting a new appearance. Since he's no longer a sinner, Sir Pentius will begin the second season of Has Been Hotel as an angel and prove that redeeming a demon's soul is possible. Adam may have hit the nail on the head with his list, as acting selfless was what Sir Pentius did before ascending, as he gave his life protecting others, with no regard for what would happen to him in the process. The only difference between the list and reality was Sir Pentius' death, meaning a redeemed sinner may have to die before they can be reborn in heaven. The theory about Adam's fate in future seasons depends on the assumption that this system works in two ways. While a sinner can have redemption and go to heaven after death, an angel can also fall to hell. As we explored earlier, some of Adam's actions make him indiscernible from many of the sinners we see in the series. He's just as cruel, violent, and crude as hell citizens, but he receives nothing more than a glare or a stern talk from his superiors in retaliation. Fortunately, Adam's time of peace and not facing consequences may have ended and the show must go on. When Adam nearly defeats Charlie during his attack on the Hasbin Hotel, he's interrupted by Lucifer. The two undergo a one-on-one -on -one fight, with Lucifer's experience and angelic power quickly overwhelming Adam, leaving him beaten on the ground. Charlie convinces Lucifer to spare Adam, encouraging a single act of mercy for the season finale. Whoa, whoa, Dad. He's had enough. However, fate seems to have other plans as Nifty arrives and delivers a swift killing blow with an angelic weapon, rendering Adam powerless and incapable of surviving. Loot and the other exorcists mourn their leader before fleeing to heaven. While they leave Adam's body behind, Loot takes his halo, using it to prove his death to Lilith later on. Now that Adam has died, he may return in season 2 as a sinner. Unfortunately for him, his new life will be far from easy. Adam used to exist with no strife, as according to him in Welcome to Heaven, there were no bad days in heaven. He wouldn't have to worry about unsolicited acts of violence or crime when walking down the street, nor did he need to vie for power against those stronger than him. All that will change if Adam becomes a citizen of hell as he has no prospects, reputation, or angelic power to protect him. Other sinners may eagerly try to defeat Adam the first chance they get because he was not only the first man, but also a former angel. He'll have to think fast to survive in his new environment as he has a few options. If Adam retains his former memories after becoming a sinner, his first choice would likely be contacting Heaven. He would likely view his fall as a mistake and try to rectify it by speaking to Sarah or another high-ranking angel. However, since they don't know what gets a soul into Heaven, they would have no way to bring Adam home without breaking their rules. Adam could also try to contact Loot, his loyal lieutenant. She would likely meet with him, offering her assistance and sympathy. Unfortunately, hiding a sinner in Heaven wouldn't be easy, especially if Adam maintains a similar appearance to his past self. Unable to rely on his old allies, Adam will have no choice but to adapt to his environment and make new friends, even from the unlikeliest places. You work for me again, and at the hearing, you're gonna help me shut this kindergarten snowflake down for good. Unable to rely on his former allies to return home, Adam's only chance to join heaven again would be through redemption. It's possible he could end up on the doorstep of the Hasbin Hotel, begging Charlie for forgiveness and asking for a second chance. Whether he's successful is an entirely different story and depends on his behavior. In the end, Adam could be someone better suited to hell and all the horrors it houses. You think you're tough? I'm tougher than you. <laughs> you lack discipline. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. You all should be worshiping me, you ungrateful, disgusting.